the innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends, how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 57,000 participants here in South Dakota who take part in high school sports or activities. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs. There's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800 Kill Bugs. Whether you are pregnant or planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live. The foundation. Let's get you ready for game number four from the 15th annual Dakota Wesleyan Culver's Basketball Classic, also presented by Bank West and a couple of local teams from the Mitchell area. The Platte Geddes Black Panthers with a record of nine and six, and the Bridgewater Embry Huskies. Uh, Huskies with a record of nine and seven. Let's talk Platt Geddes first of all. They started off the season six and one, but have kind of hit a slide lately. They've lost five of their last seven games for their nine and six mark. And their head coach, Frank Cutler, uh, is trying to get his team righted on the ship before the postseason, which starts here in about a week to 10 days or so. In region 5A, they are number five right now, but still, uh, anybody's matchup between the fourth seed, Sanborn Central, Woonsocket, and Platte Geddes. Parkston is actually leading that region with Wagner second, Parkston 11 and five, Wagner 10 and five, and then Hanson 10 and six. So uh, really kind of a dogfight between Wagner and Hanson for that second and third spot. I'm not sure if anybody catches Parkston unless they go on a big slide here late. But Platte Geddes again trying to right the ship as uh, again, they've lost five of their last seven games. They're led in scoring by Tanner Dyke, 6'3", senior forward, averaging 15 points a ball game along with six rebounds and four assists. Two other players in double figures, Hayden Sprick, a 5'10", junior, 13 points, five boards per game, and Braxton Brukeman at 10 points per ball game, a 6'3", junior for the Black Panthers. Meanwhile, for the Bridgewater Emory Huskies, they started off the season three and five, but they have been six and two since. They've won five of their last seven games and playing pretty well right now. But those seven losses, four of those losses, have come to teams in the top nine in the state of South Dakota in the Class B seeding. So they have had a brutal schedule indeed. And they come in uh, with one of their players not playing at all this season. They were looking forward to a big season from Jackson Cook, a starter a year ago as a sophomore, but he was injured in football and he has not played all season long. So uh, that's a tough loss for Bridgewater Emory and their coach, Scott Schultz. And they're battling in region 3B here right now. And as far as 3B is concerned, they are in fifth place right now. And it uh, looks like it's probably gonna be ended up uh, that way because Howard is your top seed, Canastota second and Ethan third, Del Rapid St. Mary's fourth. So how's that for a loaded region? And then Bridgewater Emory right now, nine and seven, and uh, will probably end up being either fifth or sixth, depending on how the rest of their season goes. Chester is right behind them as far as Region 3B is concerned. Their leader, Ben Weber, 17 points, 10 rebounds per contest. Two other players in double figures. Hayden Wallman, 11 points and three rebounds a contest. Ben Weber, 6'5", sophomore, by the way. And Hayden Wallman, six foot sophomore, 11 points. And then 6'3", senior Cameron Stottero, at 11 points and five rebounds per contest as well. And both teams are getting warmed up here to uh, start this matchup. 
Looking forward to it. Of course, longtime friends of mine, Frank Cutler on the Plattgetta side, Scott Schultz on the Bridgewater Emory side. And nice crowd here to see some of the locals get after it here. <laughs> and Jocko wow. says they brought out the big dogs. Look at this crew. <laughs> Man. Jim, Jim Jocko Johnston, Jim Yee. Ricketts, and Mike Mutter. Holy smokes. Wow. There's about, I don't know, over 100 years between them guys, too. And there's going to probably be some chicken eaten after the uh, ball game. Then. <laughs> I, I, that's a safe bet, Mr. Smith. <laughs> safe bet indeed. Yeah. All right. Well. Jimmy Ricketts has been a friend of mine ever since, geez, I don't know. How far we go back, Jimmy? 80-some, I think? Yeah, about 80, 81, something like that. So, Well, one thing, with these three guys working, you know there'll be no missed calls in this that, That's exactly it right. Can't be done. And can't Jim be. and I have already talked in the past about how he's got every one of them right, <laughs> at least when I'm doing game for him. <laughs> oh, All right, well, the starters will be introduced on an alternating basis, but we'll go team by team. For Platt Geddes, the Black Panthers, 9-6. and six. They'll start number three is a 5'8'' senior, Parker Bailey, eight points and four rebounds a contest. Number five is Tanner Dyke, a 6'3'' senior, 15 points, six rebounds, four assists per ball game to lead the team. Number 11 is a 5'10'' junior, Hayden Sprick, 13 points, five rebounds a game. He's one of three players in doubles. Number 13 is Skylar Hanson, a 6'3'' senior, 4.6 boards a game. And number 23, 6'3'' junior, Braxton Brukelman, 10 points and seven rebounds per contest. We'll also see number four, Max Miller, a 5'11 junior, and number 24, Jai Bailey, a 5'8 sophomore. For Coach Frank Cutler, assisted by Carter Chemnitz, and the Black Panthers started off the season six and one, but have dropped five of their last seven, now nine and six on the season. For Bridgewater Emory, they'll start number one, Holden Wolman, a six foot sophomore guard, 11 points, three rebounds, five assists per game. Number four is Jace Kaiser, a six-foot senior, nine points, five boards a game. Number five is a 6'3 senior, Cameron Stottero, 11 points, five rebounds a game. Number 10 is a 6'1 junior, Macklin Weber, 6.6 boards. And number 12, Ben Weber, a 6'5 sophomore, 17 points, 10 rebounds, three assists, and three block shots. We'll also see number 14, Ryan Wolman, a 5'9 junior. Number 22, Kill uh, Keen Stevenson, a six-foot junior. And Jason Zeeb, number 33, a six-foot junior. For coach, Scott Schultz, assisted by Griffith Van Loer and Brad Barcher. Brad Barcher has been a busy guy this weekend. Yes. Not only has he been yes, uh, running yes. the show with him and his lovely wife, Heather, but assistant coach for the Huskies right now. And uh, that old boy's done a good job and has been very busy. Well, he's helped the Wesleyan coaches tremendously for putting the programs together, doing all kinds of stuff to get this classic all lined up officials and all that sort of thing. So hats off to Brad Barcher. There's no doubt. And F Bridgewater Emmy's gonna get the ball down low. First shot of the ball game by Stottero won't go and rebound of the Black Panthers. You know, and all the work that he's done, especially after the health problems he's had coming off heart surgery and him and I talked a little bit about that and compared some notes, but uh, yeah, he's fighting through and done a heck of a job. Here's Tanner Dyke with a basketball. Platt Geddes with their road maroon jerseys. He'll dump it down low for Brukeman. Little one-hander skips over the rim and no good. And the rebound to Ben Weber, his first of what will be many. Six size sophomore races front court. He'll have it at the top of the key, picked up there by Dyke. He'll dump it down low. Jace Kaiser, no, had a good look. Couldn't knock it down. So he stays scoreless about a minute in. Here's Sprick with it. Gets it left-hand side now for Bailey. Bailey, the long three, no. And a backside rebound to Stottero for the Huskies. Into the front court, Weber. That's Macklin Weber now for Ben Weber. Here's Stottero. Ben driving into the lane, a lot of contact, no. Put back up, that one won't go with the one hand. And boy, there's been a lid on the hoop so far for both squads, 90 seconds in and nobody's been able to crack the scoreboard yet. Here's Brukeman with it, and the ball knocked away, and it's gonna be off of Platt Geddes. Good defense by Stottero to knock it away. And that one's gonna go off of the Black Panthers, and Tanner Dyke will have it carry him off of him. So the Huskies will get it back. 
Had to tie a shoe there, of course. Yeah. Stottero had a little shoe come loose. Holden Wallman brings it front court. Right side now for Kaiser. Man-to-man -man defense here for Frank Cutler's Black Panthers. alley back backdoor. No good on the shot. Some contact, but not enough for a foul. And that one rims off for Ben Weber. Here comes Platt the other way. Two minutes in. Somebody looking to crack the scoreboard. Nobody's been able to do it yet. Here's Bailey thought about a three. Good job there defensively to shut him down. Now drive in the lane. Nobody there as Tanner Dyke loses it. 13 on the shot clock. Crossover dribble by Sprick. Hills takes a fall away. That one is out of bounds. And no good. Back to the Huskies. So Bridgewater Emory will bring in number 23, Jackson Cook. Well, to see him, that's one of the first times he's played all year after that injury in football. I was under the impression he wouldn't play, but well, I was wrong, and good to see him out on the floor. Yeah, looks good. Yep. Jace Kaiser gets it to Cook. His shot rejected inside by Brukeman, and here come the Black Panthers front court. We played over two and a half minutes of nothing yet. Here's a three-pointer. That's off the mark. No good by Bailey. And here no lack of action here, but the ball won't go in the hole. Yeah, no kidding. Cook fakes two defenders in the air. No good, but a foul. And so far, first one to ten wins. <laughs> yeah, we've been going up and down the floor, though. No, no doubt about that. Yep. Foul is called on Braxton Brukeman. His first, team's first, and at the free throw line, Jackson Cook. First free throw. That one rolls in good. Had to use some body English, but he got that one to fall. one nothing Huskies. We'll see number, tw uh, number four, Max Miller, 5'11", junior, and 24, Jai Bailey, 5'8", sophomore. Coach Frank Cutler looking for a little change as Cook's second free throw no good, and Dyke with the rebound. We played three minutes, 1-0. Here's Max Miller with it. Long one for three. That's going to be well short. No good by Sprick. Offensive rebound put up, though, and in by, I believe, Brukeman. Or was that Skyler Hand? Yep, Skyler Hand. Yep. 13, not 23. Not the other end. Three-pointer. That's up and no good by Macklin Weber. But Ben Weber secures the long rebound, and the Huskies will keep it. Here's Woolman right side now for Kaiser. Ben Weber, nice pass in the lane. Little fall away with the one hand good. Jace Kaiser converts. That's a nice assist by Ben Weber from the corner. 3-2 Huskies. Out between the circles, here's Sprick holding up the two fingers. Here's Dyke at the point. Couple dribbles now for Miller. Out front for Bailey. Bailey drives in the lane. Might have been partially blocked by Woolman. Huskies with the loose ball, and the pass down the floor goes into the second row. Parker Bailey will check back in for Platt Geddes. Cameron Stottero back in for the Huskies. Halfway through quarter number one in a action-packed first quarter. Uh, not a lot of packing on the scoreboard yet, 3-2. Dyke trying to back his way down on Weber. Weber says, get it out of here. Gets it back, though. Reverse layup is good. Nice assist by Parker Bailey to keep it alive. And Braxton Brukeman will score on the reverse layup around Ben Weber. Now you're right about Bailey, 5'8", but he was in there with the big boys and just tapped it right back in there for that bucket. Macklin Weber up for Stottero, left side for Ben Weber. Trying to get a pick. High arching shot with great elevation, no. Rebound tipped a couple of times, big scramble for it. Bodies flying everywhere. And finally, Bailey will come out of there for Platt Geddes. A three-pointer from the wing, good! On a three-pointer by Jai Bailey. Well, that's getting it down the floor in a hurry. In fact, there were no other maroon jerseys down there. But uh, hey, he was open in the corner, yep. nails it. 5A sophomore decides to take matters into his own hands yeah. and buries it. And foul will be called here on Parker Bailey. His first personal foul, according to Jocko, Jim Johnston. So free throws upcoming for Holden Wallman, six foot sophomore.
33, Jason Zeeb is in for the first time. Six foot junior, and he'll replace Jace Kaiser. And the second one also good by Woolman. Three players for the Huskies have scored. Three players for the Black Panthers have scored. And Platt get us with a two-point advantage. In the corner, here's Hanton. Gets it down low, twisting and turning. Miller doesn't have anywhere to go. Now backdoor cut. Dyke, little floater, good inside the lane. Tanner Dyke will score his first two points. And here's Wolman driving to the left side. Now for Stottero. Stottero cross court pass, three pointer by Macklin Weber. Rims off, no good. Offensive rebound to Jason Zeeb, and the Huskies will keep it. 2.20 to play in the quarter. Stottero right side for Macklin Weber. Now for Zeeb. I get us playing good defense right now in the man. Ben Weber spots up for the three. Back of the rim, no good. And the rebound secured by Parker Bailey at 5'8. And a cross court pass deflected, and Stottero will come away with a steal. Good job getting back on the defense. Sotero, bounce pass in the lane. Here's Weber. His fall away. Good. Finally got one to go. Yeah, nice shot. Can't stop that. Got a 6-5 frame, and you go up that high. And yeah, and falling away also. Yep, yep. That's tough. Jai Bailey driving into the lane. Reverse layup won't go after he hit a three earlier. That one won't stay, and Bridgewater Emery with a chance to tie with a bucket or take the lead with a three, but he traveled, getting set for the three-pointer. Yeah, Wolman open. I think he had in mind he was going to shoot that three coming up the floor, and then he just kind of shuffled the feet to get set to uh, to shoot the ball. Really didn't have any defensive pressure at that time. Yep. Jace Kaiser back in along with Jackson Cook for Bridgewater Emery. I think Black Geddes made a change as well. Yep, they did. Hayden Sprick is back in. Down to a minute 15 to play here in the first quarter. Drive by Jai Bailey into the lane. He's not afraid. He'll take it in, but missed it. Ouch. Rebound and the ball out of bounds. Bailey tried to get it back and hit the floor pretty hard there, but yeah, he uh, did. He's okay, no problem. Nearing the one minute mark here in quarter number one of game number four of the 15th annual Dakota Wesley and Culver's Basketball Classic, also presented by Bank West. Stottero on the drive and can. Good defense there by Bailey. Back once again, Macklin Weber. Little fall away now, no good by Stottero. And a backside rebound by the Black Panthers and Brukeman will secure it and give it off to Parker Bailey. Here's Sprick. Down low for Brukeman. He's got position, missed the shot. Good defense by the Huskies and let's see what they want to do with the shot clock off. Ben Weber, a wild shot, no, but a loose ball and a put back up and good by Jace Kaiser. Well, Weber just had nowhere to go. He's, ah, I'll throw it up there, see what happens. <laughs> Turned out okay. Got an assist out of the deal. Yeah. Shot from the right wing by Sprick, no good. And the Huskies with a chance to take a last shot as the shot clock is off, down to eight seconds to go. Here's Jace Kaiser with it. Better hurry. Yeah. Out front. Here's a long one on the way by Macklin. Oh, it hit the side and the front of the rim and came off. Macklin Weber just about knocked down the long one. But we have played eight minutes and we're back to square. Our score, Platt Geddes nine, Bridgewater Emery nine. We'll be right back in a minute on Live Ticket TV. We do business is right in our initials, W-E. We, everything we do is a partnership. We understand solving the many complex challenges growers face every day takes teamwork. And when we succeed, we do it together. That's the power of we. Agriculture is like no other business, which makes Farm Credit Services of America like no other lender. Owned by the farmers and ranchers we serve, our customers have a voice in how we work, a stake in what we do, and share in our success. Discover a lender that works for you 
at Farm Credit Services of America. Cork Gears helps. Years of my life. <laughs> As we get set for action, second quarter quickly. Platt get us 4.15 from the floor, 26.7 percent. Bridgewater Emory, 3 of 14 for 21 percent. 1 of 5 from the three-point line for Platt Geddes, 0 of 4 for Bridgewater Emery from the three-point line. Not exactly lighting it up, are we? No, but both teams playing some pretty good defense as well as Dyke trying to force his way in. Little baby hook over Weber, and that's good. Tanner Dyke with four points now. We might check out a couple of other numbers if we get a stop. Well, here. the good thing is, I mean, it's a good, nice clean game. Uh, just two turnovers against either team in that first quarter. Cook tried to turn around, and good job by Brukeman to defend that one. And so after the missed shot, here comes Platt Geddes. His hand gives it back to Brukeman. Now Dyke in the lane. That one hangs on the rim, no good. Rebound Cook knocked out of bounds by Brukeman. It'll stay or go to, excuse me, Bridgewater Emery. Rebounding about even, 12-10 advantage for Platt Geddes. It's just that, uh, yeah, ball not going in the hole when both teams are shooting under 30%, but a good Good evenly played game thus far. Here's Wallman with it. Popping out on the wing is Kaiser. Ben Weber comes out to get it. Weber trying to back his way down on Dyke. Kicks it in the corner. Cook for three, gonna be short, no good. Great rebound flying through there, Jace Kaiser. And he'll secure it and keep the possession alive for the Huskies. Kaiser free throw line, nope. And the rebound to Dyke for Platt Geddes. So we played about 90 seconds here, second quarter. Dyke will drive into the lane, a lot of contact, and now a blocking foul. Cook will pick that one up. Hey, want to say thanks to a few of our presenting sponsors, Todd Strand and the folks at TS Insulating. Proud supporters of the Platt Geddes Black Panthers. Thank you to Todd Strand. And also say hi to the gang watching the ball game down at Kipes Lounge today. As free throw by Dyke, no good. Open Monday through Saturday, cold drinks, pizza, cards, darts, and pool. Kipes Lounge in downtown Platts. And to the folks at Kipes, if I still have a bill there, just let me know. And I hope it's not collecting too much interest. Do they still all yell, Rodney, when you walk in? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like the Cliff Clavin of Kipes, you know oh, what I mean? Cliff Clavin, oh boy. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, folks. Free throw, no good, not the Bridgewater Emory end. Jumper by Woolman is good. Woolman with four points now, and we're tied at 11. Almost two minutes gone here in quarter number two. Brukeman leans in, tough shot, tried to twist his way through, partially blocked and missed it. But then a turnover at the other end at half court. Dyke is going to try to fake his man up and scores. Weber lost it. Dyke got it, scores it off the window. He has six. Now at the other end, layup is up and good by Macklin Weber. Now we're starting to heat things up yeah. a bit. Well, both these teams can go up and down the floor, no question. Timeout, Frank Cutler. And he's a little grumpy. <laughs> so we're going to take a short 30-second break. We are tied at 13. We're back in 30 seconds on Live Ticket TV. Stay at home by offering caregiving, nursing, and medical alert systems in over 55 communities in South Dakota. Specializing in tasks like bathing, meal prep, and medication setups, our well-trained staff delivers exceptional care. We invest in our team through customized training and comprehensive benefits. To learn more about job opportunities or services, visit our website at corecares.com. Core Cares, proudly serving our community. After the timeout, we'll get Platt Geddes with a basketball. Say thanks to Total Stop Convenience Store, proud supporter of South Dakota High School Athletics. Total Stop Convenience Store locations all across southeastern and south central South Dakota. Thank you to the folks at Total Stop. Here's Dyke with it, turns the corner, fakes Whoa. Weber in the air. Oh, look out. Weber hits the floor hard. Dyke with great patience, waited for him to fly by, and he'll put it off the window for his eighth point. I don't know how he got by him without the contact there. I don't know either. 15-13, Black Panthers. Jace Kaiser gets it down low for Weber, reverse layup, but he's gonna be bumped and fouled. And we'll go to the free throw line for a pair. 
Mike Mutter says the foul is on Tanner Dyke, his first and the first of the second quarter. I don't think, are we going to shoot? I don't think so. Oh, I guess it was on the drive. Pardon yeah, me. you know, they locked up legs. That was a heck of a good uh, effort, though, by Ben Weber because he just kind of took the ball and flicked it up at the basket, yep. trying to draw the two free throws. Yep, that's, I originally thought that, but uh, probably a good call on the baseline. And here's Stottero with it. He's going to launch the high arching three. Got it. Oh, boy, big shot by Cameron Stottero. Averaging 11 a ball game, and that's his first points of the day. Bridgewater Emery back by one. Three minutes gone by here, second quarter. Sprick, three-pointer from the corner. That one is up and good by Parker Bailey. Well, a little bit of a slow start for both teams, but now we're starting to get after it here. Platt Geddes with that three is back up by two. Here's Macklin Weber, now a three at the other end. That been no good by Stottero. Tried it from the right side this time and left a little short, skipped off. Parker Bailey now for Sprick. Jab step going into the lane. Nice oh, lead wow. down on the block for Skyler Hanna. Sprick just got kind of knocked off balance, and uh, that was just a super pass inside that time. Yep, Skyler Hanton, good job to be ready for that pass as well, and an easy deuce. Now a big scramble over in the sideline here, whistle and a timeout. Coach Scott Schultz saw it. Holden Woolman was in trouble, calls a timeout to keep possession. Well, 20 to 16, Platt Geddes leading Bridgewater Emory. We'll be back in 30 seconds on Live Ticket TV. The word cooperative means working together for a common purpose. At Actegra Cooperative, we are dedicated to supporting the success of our farmers and the health of our communities for generations to come. Rooted in our communities, Actegra strives to instill dedication, determination, and integrity in everything we do. And that includes inspiring the next generation of agricultural leaders. Lucky for us. Huskies after the Scott Schultz timeout will have it. 19 on the shot clock. Here's Kaiser now for Ben Weber. Check back in at the dead ball. Turns and faces the basket. Cook will go fly into the floor. <laughs> Here's Weber. Uh, jumper with high elevation. No, skips off. And it's out of bounds off of Jace Kaiser. Well, at least you know the Corn Palace floor is well waxed <laughs> when you see him sliding about 10 feet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Cook will check out Stottero back in after a short break. A wonder four minutes to play and a good first half. Sprick, front court, bounce pass for Dyke. Dyke now for Hanton. Long one for three, it's good. On the wing, Max Miller will score. Boy, great balance. That's the sixth Black Panther to mm. score in the basketball game, led by Tanner Dyke with eight. Everybody else has either one or two buckets. Weber gives it off now for Woolman. Woolman in the corner circles, out for Ben Weber again. Ben Weber at 6'3", drives strong and scores. <laughs> Tell you what, 6'5", sophomore handling the ball pretty well right there. Nice athletic move off the window. Cuts it to five, eight, uh, to 23-18. Here's Sprick for Dyke. Dyke a jab step, can't go with it now. Parker Bailey comes out to get it now for Dyke. Lobbing it down low, whistling a foul from behind on Cameron Stottero. His first, team second of the second quarter. Parker Bailey will inbound, looking. Gets it out for Sprick. Sprick with a quick three, back of the rim and no good. But a long rebound run down by Miller. And Platt Geddes will keep it with a fresh shot clock. Sometimes those three-pointers with those long caroms, it's offensive advantage to go run it down. Parker Bailey, left side for Dyke. Dyke kind of trying to back his way down. And good defense by the Huskies, but they can't secure it. 
Platt Geddes will drive in the lane, lost control of it. Here's Hampton underneath the basket, knocked away by Ben Weber. And the Huskies bring it front court. Jumper on the right side, that's up and no good by Holden Wolman. Offensive rebound to Ben Weber, throws it up at the basket. Now he gets knocked down to the floor. <laughs> And a rough and tumble situation there as Skylar Hanton comes away with the foul. I tell you, Ben Weber's playing hard though. I mean, he's all over the all over the floor. Nice job there to, to stick with it. Yep. Yeah, kind of got hit pretty hard and then his back to the basket, kind of flipped it up over his head, hoping he could have got some sort of prayer answered, but he'll go to the line for two and the first one is off the back. Brookelman checks in now, replacing Hampton for Coach Frank Cutler. Weber's second one, that's off the rim, no good. Missed them both. So nearing the two minute mark, Platt Geddes with a five point lead and the ball as Sprick will walk it across the timeline. Brookman back for Sprick. Tries to turn the corner and gets to the right wing. Looking down underneath the basket, Brookman had position, no good, rebounded well, or defended well, excuse me, by Weber. And Huskies with it. Left side, Jace Kaiser for three, kaboom! Jace Kaiser with a big three, he has seven. Just like that, a two point game again, nearing the 90 second mark here in a very good first half of basketball. Dyke, a couple of jab steps, almost knocked away from him. Underneath Brookman, he'll be fouled. I think that's on Stottero again. And that'll be Stottero's second. So free throws upcoming for Braxton Brueckelman. I'll tell you, Platt Gett is really making a concerted effort here to get the ball inside. I think the last four times down the floor now, they've gone down into the uh, low post, gotten a couple of fouls out of it, missed a couple of shots, but they're getting good shots from down underneath the basket. Cook is coming in. Stottero will leave with those two fouls. Brookman very short on the first one. This one is long, and he misses them both. Got to make those free throws, right? Yes, indeed. Oh, well, Ben Weber brings it across. It's six five. Dyke picks him up. Weber's going to drive into the lane. Scoop shot. Nice move. Dr. J-esque. And a steal. And a put back up and good by Ben Weber. After the driving layup, he steals it and makes it. And the Bridgewater Emory Huskies with four quick ones. In fact, they were down 23-15 at one time. This is a 10-0 run. And Sprick's gonna lose it. Gets no. it back, throws it down to Dyke. Dyke fakes his man in the air, no good. Rebound battle for Ben Weber has it. And the shot clock and game clock are almost simultaneous. And let's see what Coach Scott Schultz wants to do. He gets up and yells, hold it, hold it, hold it. Or don't. They didn't listen to it. No, nope, they don't. Oh my goodness, and Schultz, he's irritated. So Platt, get us with a chance at a last shot here. Bridgewater ending the half on a 10 to nothing run. Until now, let's see if Platt Geddes can stem that tide and get a hoop late. Sprick starting a drive into the lane, no good. Rebound tapped out of bounds. It will stay with Platt Geddes as it went off of Weber's hands. So Sprick will inbound it in for Dyke. His shot, no good. Rebound to Weber, and that's going to do it. He'll take a long three quarter court shot at the buzzer, and that will do it. Bridgewater Emory ends on a 10 nothing run in our score at halftime. Freeze Bridgewater Emory 25 and Platt Geddes 23. We'll come back and talk about it in two minutes. This is the 15th annual Dakota Wesleyan Culver's Basketball Classic, also presented by Bank West. You're watching it on Live Ticket TV. Life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure or start a new business farmers union insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment farmers union insurance contact your local farmers union insurance agent today 
If you have a Grossenberg custom calendar, now is the month you can have some fun and get a free can of John Deere glass cleaner. How is that, you may ask? Take the maze challenge on the February calendar, complete it from start to end, and bring it in to one of Grossenberg's nine locations, parts departments, and receive one free can of John Deere glass cleaner. Grossenberg Implement is your John Deere location for fun and savings. Offer only valid for one customer per month. Must present a copy or the actual completed maze to qualify. See parts staff for complete details. John Deere glass cleaner part number TY25684. Whether you are pregnant or planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live. We connect people. Have been for a hundred years or so. How we get that done? Well, that won't always be the same. But why we connect people? Not in a million years is that ever gonna change. We didn't build the communities that made South Dakota, no. We just brought them together. Your first car. It might not have been perfect, but that didn't matter. You loved it because you worked hard for it. You took care of it and it took care of you, your friends, and maybe that someone special. And through it all, we were there working with you, for you, to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. We're back at halftime of a very good game, game number four of our nine today. And I think I'd mentioned earlier, uh, maybe a time or two, that uh, Bridgewater Emery was on a 10 nothing run. Actually, it was a 9 nothing run because uh, Platt Geddes led by seven at that point. But Bridgewater Emery closes out 9 to nothing and leads it by the two-point margin, 25-23 to here at the break. The scoreboard is pretty even, and we'll take a look at the stats in depth in just a little bit, but that stat sheet's pretty even. Oh, yeah, shooting is even. Uh, I was just looking at the uh, stat for Ben Weber because I thought he was just excellent here in the first half. I mean, the guy was all over the floor, and it's showing that. They have him officially for nine rebounds already in the first half of play. Nice job by Ben Weber. Wow. So it was 9-9 after one, and Platt Geddes got out to a 23-16 lead. Uh, but then Bridgewater Emery will come back with that 9-0 spurt and leads it by the two-point margin. Far as scoring is concerned, we'll take a look at the official scoring for Bridgewater Emery. Seven points for Jace Kaiser and Ben Weber, like uh, Tim mentioned, eight points and nine boards already. So eight for Weber, seven for Jace Kaiser, four for Holden Woolman, seven for Jace Kaiser, as we mentioned, uh, three points for Cameron Stottero, and two for Macklin Weber, one for Jackson Cook. Meanwhile, for Platt Geddes, they're led by Tanner Dyke, only player in doubles with 10, and then four points for Skyler Hanton, three each for Parker Bailey, for Max Miller, and for Jai Bailey, and Jai Bailey is one of one from the three-point line. So that's your scoring for both of the teams. And again, Bridgewater Emory leads it 25 to 23. As far as shooting is concerned, both teams are 10 of 28. For Bridgewater Emory, 10 of 28 from the floor, 35.7%. They're two of nine from the three-point line at 22%, three of six from the foul line at 50%. Meanwhile, for Platt Geddes, 10 of 28, 35.7, like we mentioned, three of eight from the three-point line at 37.5%, but they have missed all four of their free throws that they've taken thus far. Rebounds, as you would suspect, a lot of them. Bridgewater has 20 total, three offensive, 17 defensive. 19 rebounds total for Platt Geddes, three offensive and 16 defensive. 
For Bridgewater Emory, five assists on 10 made baskets. They turned it over three times. They blocked it once and stolen it four times. For Platt Geddes, they have seven assists on 10 made baskets. They've turned it over five times. They blocked it once and they stole it once. Platt Geddes led by as many as seven. Bridgewater Emory by two. And that's where it is right now. Bridgewater Emory 25 and Platt Geddes 23. Tim mentioned the uh, big game so far for uh, Ben Weber. Eight points, nine rebounds thus far. The big leader, seven points for Jace Kaiser. But uh, 10 points for Tanner Dyke to lead the way in scoring. Leading rebounder for Platt Geddes is Parker Bailey. The 5'8 guard leads them in rebounds right now with five. So great first half of yep. basketball to yep. say the least. Indeed. We've had three good ones already. Game four here in progress. We've had a four-pointer, a five-pointer, and a six-pointer. Game one, McCook Central Montrose over Korska Stickney, 54 to 48. That game went back and forth. Lower Brule and Freeman, what a battle that thing was. We had all kinds of things going on in that game, technical fouls and all kinds of business, but Freeman uh, pulls it out, 55-51 over Lower Brule. And then the game right before this one, the Phillips Scotties uh, hold on to defeat Centerville, 49-44. to The final coming up after this one, a Class A matchup. St. Thomas Moore's Cavaliers against the Mount Vernon Plankinton Titans. That will be uh, the three o'clock game. Then Gregory, Del Rapids, St. Mary's. Coming up at six tonight, Howard and Parkston. The 7.30 game, Canastota, White River. Big time Class B matchup there. And then our finale tonight, it'll be Class A Hamlin, ranked number two in the state. Viberg Hurley in Class B, ranked number four. Both teams that can really get up and down the floor. So should be a fun one. Uh, hope you Tune them all in here on Live Ticket TV. Let the people know about it if you can't be here at the Corn Palace to uh, to watch it in person. Well, we're just about set to go with the start of the third quarter here. 25-23, Bridgewater Emory holding on. Uh, let's take a, a final timeout back in two minutes. Two minutes here on Live Ticket TV. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 57,000 participants here in South Dakota who take part in high school sports or activities. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800 Kill Bugs. Whether you are pregnant or planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live. The foundation for how we do business is right in our initials, W-E, we. Everything we do is a partnership. We understand solving the many complex challenges growers face every day takes teamwork. And when we succeed, we do it together. That's the power of we. Ready for the start of the third quarter. Bridgewater Emory with the two point lead and the ball ended the half on a nine nothing run. And they'll have it to start the third quarter of play. Game number four from the 15th annual Dakota Wesley and Culver's Basketball Classic also presented by our friends at Bank West. Right away a three by Holden Weber, or Holden Woolman, excuse me. 
Holden Wolman is up and good. Wolman's second three-pointer of the game. And that's a 12-0 run, stating back from the first half of play. Now a steal into the front court. Here's Wolman again off the glass and good. Great assist by Jace Kaiser. And that's a 14-0 run now. Five straight by Bridgewater Emery after a nine straight at the end of the second quarter. But Geddes has to try to find some way to stem the tide. Dyke will take it into the lane. Good job by Ben Weber to stop that one. And now Buechelman has it knocked away from him and a steal and another stop. Bridgewater Emery with the ball and the seven point lead. Here's Wolman starting a drive, kicks it in the corner. Stottero for three, skips off no good. Dyke with the rebound. 30 to 23 is our score right now. And here's a drive, nice pass into Brukeman. Partially blocked inside, but a foul is called. Nice dish by Parker Bailey into, into uh, Brukeman. And the foul is called on Ben Weber. Weber's first, team's first, free throws upcoming for Braxton Brukeman. And the first one good. So that snaps the 14 nothing run from the first half to the second half. Brukeman will knock them both down. And Brukeman will take a seat. And in for the first time, second half, Jai Bailey. Had a three pointer in the first half of play. Almost 90 seconds gone by, Huskies with a five point lead led by as many as seven just a moment ago. Here comes Kaiser with it, down for Ben Weber. Eight points and nine rebounds in the first half. Weber, nice move on a reverse layup. Used the glass to shield the defender. Weber now in double figures, he has 10 on that reverse layup. Owen oh, Sprick. Was going to try a back door, but he kind of hesitated and turned it over. Now at the other end, drive and scoring. Macklin Weber. With Macklin Weber running the floor well in a two on one, takes it up and spins it off the window, whistling a timeout. Frank Cutler. And I just, I'm reading the body English, and Frank still sits there and he kind of puts his head down. He's like, oh boy. Yep, so a timeout, Frank Cutler. We'll We'll keep it right here. I want to take time to thank a few more of our game sponsors that make this all possible, including our friends at Meyer Motor, car sales and service right along Highway 262. Check out their website at MeyerMotor.com. Also, thanks to Triotel Communications Incorporated, phone, internet, Trio Vision, and camera monitoring. Triotel.net, T I T R I O T E L. Dot net trio tell and by our friends at security state bank of emory canastota and they are member fdic the security state bank in emory in location in canastota as well well after bridgewater emory was down 23 to 16 this has been quite the run 18 to two right now. And Platt Geddes is trying to find a way here. Again, they started off the season six and one, but they've lost five of their last seven. And trying to find a way to right the ship late in the season and in the second half of this one. Sprick left side three pointer on the way by Bailey, no good but an offensive rebound by Hanton. And they'll keep it, and then they'll throw it away. Stottero intercepts, bounce pass in the lane, layup good by Macklin Weber. A 20 to two run right now. From the first half to the second half. And here's Dyke with a fall away, that one is no good. Rebound to the Huskies again, Macklin Weber. Holden Woolman across the timeline, almost three minutes gone. Here's a backdoor cut, nice pass by Christian, by uh, Kaiser, 
and Holden Wallman will score 22 to two run right now. 38-25, just like that, three minutes in. And here's Dyke will finally get a bucket to go. Tanner Dyke with two. And it's 38-27, 4.45 to play here in the third. Here's Kaiser coming out to get it. Backdoor cut, Ben Weber's pass behind his back is going to be tied up, looking for Woolman. And the alternating possession gives it back to Platt Geddes. Max Miller checks in. So Miller, Hanton, Dyke, along with Bailey, both Baileys, Jai and Parker. Meanwhile, Woolman, Kaiser, Ben Weber, Stottero, and Cook on the floor for Bridgewater Emery. Dyke trying to back his way down, tries to fake the defender in the air, little baby hook, no. I think Ben Weber might be called for the foul. <laughs> my, my buddy my, my, Mike Mutter says, got him in the head. Well, <laughs> that explains what happened. <laughs> Weber's second, Dyke's free throw, rims off, no good. Hung on, then fell off. <laughs> Got him in the head. That a boy, Muds. <laughs> so it stays 38 27. And second one is good by Tanner Dyke. 13 now for the 6 3 senior. Scott Schultz yells out, Ben, bring it up. And at 6 5, he will do as coach says. Pass down for Cook. Nice, strong spin move, banks off the glass, good. Yeah, the big fella inside just drew the defender to him and spun to his left and scores it. Drive by Miller, out for Dyke. Out for Jai Bailey. Up to the top, drive started by Parker Bailey. And the ball knocked away, and we have a whistle and a foul. And foul's gonna be called on Holden Woolman. Woolman's first, team's third at the 343 mark, and free throws upcoming for Parker Bailey. First one short. Macklin Weber checks in, replacing Cameron Stottero. And Coach Frank Cutler is going to call another timeout. They're getting low on those. They only have two remaining after this one. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Fans say thanks to J.L. Arend Insurance Agency in Emory. Also to River's Edge Bank in Bridgewater, Haywarden, Howard, Marion, and Parker. And Hofer Physical Therapy. Thanks to Christy J. Hofer, physical therapist in Bridgewater. And those folks, great supporters of athletics, Bridgewater Emory Huskies. Few of the folks that make it possible here at the 15th annual Dakota Wesley and Culver's Basketball Classic, also presented by Bank West. Tim Smith standing by for the call of our next game, St. Thomas Moore and Mount Vernon Plankington. And that will be following this one. Game number four of nine today here at the 15th annual Dakota Wesley and Culver's Basketball Classic. Second free throw also good by Parker. First one is no good, second one is good, so Parker Bailey with four points. And with 3.35 to play in the third, Huskies with it. Backdoor alley, you play it, good. Nice catch in the air, and off the glass, good by Ben Weber. That's a great assist from Holden Wolman out front. 42-29. Jai Bailey, they'll dump it down low now for Brookeman, whistle and a foul. I think that's going to be on Cook. It wasn't on Cook, it was on Ben Weber. Oh boy, didn't see that one. Ben Weber with his third, fourth team foul on the Huskies. None on Platt Geddes thus far. Here's Jai Bailey leaving in for Brookeman. Brookeman will be fouled, and that's already the fifth foul of the quarter. 
Foul's going to be called. This one will be on Jackson Cook. His second. So Brukeman to the free throw line. He hit a couple a moment ago for his two points. First one good. 42 to 30. I'd get us trying to chip away at this deficit. And second one, no good. And Kaiser with the rebound. Three minutes to play in the third. Wallman leaves it for Weber. Back to Wallman again. Jump pass in the corner for Kaiser. Back out front again for Wallman. 16 on the shot clock, so no hurry. Skip pass left side. Three-pointer by Macklin. Weber knocks it down. Macklin Weber with his first three today. He has nine points. And a 15-point Husky lead. Nice leave in the lane and a drive and score by Brookman. his first basket of the day. He has five points. Two nineteen to play, third quarter. Huskies by 13 with the ball. Woolman with it. Now for Stottero in the corner. Skip pass right side. And Macklin Weber can't pull the trigger on it. Woolman skip pass again left side. Kaiser drives into the lane. Nice move, but can't get it to fall in. And a rebound will be knocked out of bounds off of the Huskies. No Platt Geddes. Walks it up the floor with Parker Bailey. For Sprick. Bounce pass down to Dyke. Dyke trying to back his way down. Turns, faces the basket, no good. Gets his own rebound. Great hustle and he scores. 15 of his team's 34 points. 90 seconds left, third quarter. Stottero for three, kaboom! Cameron Stottero with his second three-pointer, one in the second quarter, one here in the third. Back to a 14-point Husky lead. Now Sprick will try to answer, no. Rebound to Stottero. A minute 10 to go, Huskies with the ball. And the 14-point advantage. Now Bridgewater Emery can afford to take some time off the clock. That ball kicked up onto the stage. Jason Zeeb checks in first time, second half. And he'll replace Jackson Cook. Great to see Jackson Cook in the lineup. He uh, missed a lot of the season with a injury during football season for Coach Jeff Van Luer. Holden Woolman with it out front. Jump pass to the right side for Kaiser. Gets a pass across the lane and he didn't mean to. Zeeb now right side for Kaiser. That one won't go. Rebound put back up and no good by Stottero that time. And here comes Jai Bailey. Into the corner for Parker Bailey. No. And a backside rebound by the Huskies. A good job by Macklin Weber to secure it. And the shot clock is off. Huskies with a chance at a last shot. Macklin Weber and Holden Wallman playing a little catch. Down to eight. Kaiser from 30 feet. Yes. Are you kidding me? Holden Wallman knocks it down. It was, it was maybe not 30, but I guarantee it was 25 or more. Knocks it down, and it is a 17-point lead for the Huskies as we go to the fourth quarter. Our score after three, Bridgewater Emery 51, Platt Geddes 34. The final eight minutes coming up in one minute on Live Ticket TV. Agriculture is like no other business, which makes Farm Credit Services of America like no other lender. Owned by the farmers and ranchers we serve, our customers have a voice in how we work, a stake in what we do, and share in our success. Discover a lender that works for you at Farm Credit Services of America. Core Cares helps.
Welcome back once again to the Corn Palace and uh, just figuring up some numbers here. And what a turnaround of events. As again, Bridgewater Emory was down 23 to 16 in the second quarter. And at one point was on a 22 to two run. And they lead it by 17 as we start the fourth quarter of play. And Platt Geddes has, as they say in the movie, Smokey and the Bandit, a long way to go and a short time to get there. Here's Sprick with it. Out front, Jai Bailey for three. There's a start. Jai Bailey will knock that one down for his second three of the game. He has six, 51-37. Look at some numbers here in just a moment when we get a stoppage of play. Here's Kaiser, out for Stottero. Bounce pass there for Zeeb. Now jumper by Macklin Weber is off the mark, no good. Offensive rebound put up by Holden Woolman, no good. And Woolman with another offensive rebound and another try. And Ben Weber's been on the bench for a little while with three fouls, but his team has not so much as blinked. Here's a jumper, good by Jace Weber, or Jace Kaiser, excuse me, Jace Kaiser with nine points now. 53-37, under seven minutes to play in the game. Here's Dyke, little floater, one-handed, good. Little teardrop will score for a 17th point. 53-39, and 90 seconds gone by here in the fourth. And a drive, oh, look out, big time crash as Wallman and Brukeman will crash, and Brukeman hung in there strong and brave indeed to take that charge. Holden Wallman just ran him over in the lane. Oh boy. Well, Bridgewater Emory with a 26 to 11 third quarter has opened this thing up. They led by as many as 17. And that's where it was at the break. Jump stop in the lane out to Jai Bailey. That one won't go. Brookham an offensive rebound. That one won't go. Partially blocked from behind. Loose. And the Huskies have it. And Woolman, triple team, jump pass, knocked out of bounds, and it will stay with Bridgewater Emery. Well, Bridgewater Emery in that third quarter, listen to this. They go on a 26-11 run in the third quarter. Bridgewater Emery shot 11 of 15 from the floor at 73%. Meanwhile, three of eight for Platt Geddes at 37%. So eight more made baskets on seven more attempts. And that's kind of your story right there. 26 to 11 in the third quarter. And at one point, 22 to two run from the second to the third quarter. Fans say thanks to our friends at Sandy's Bar, open seven days a week with food and beverages, Ross and Amber Barcher. And hi to the folks at Sandy's Bar. And Feathers at the Ranch. Nice place for wedding receptions, business meetings, corporate retreats, family reunions, holiday parties, and graduation parties. Check out their website at feathersattheranch.com. Feathersattheranch.com. Dot com. And thank you to all of those folks and more for making this possible here today on Live Ticket TV. Huskies with it. Ben Weber back in here in the fourth quarter with those three fouls. Now for Holden Woolman. Woolman for Weber. Weber going to try to drive on Dyke, trying to back his way down into a triple team. Gets it onto the wing. Three pointer on the way is going to hit the rim by Macklin Weber. Long rebound goes out of bounds at side court. It'll go back to Platt Geddes. Also thanks to our good friends at Barcher Fencing and Concrete, Jonathan and Brad. What doesn't Brad Barcher do? I mean, he, he runs events and helps with the basketball program. He is an assistant coach for the Bridgewater Emory Huskies. He's doing fencing and concrete stuff with Jonathan. I mean, he, he's everywhere. Here's a bump and a foul, and going to the line for two will be Jai Bailey. He was hit on the shot. The foul was called on Macklin Weber. 
And you forgot his lovely wife keeps the official scorebook here right for oh, this yeah, game. Oh yeah, Heather. So it's it's a family deal. Oh, absolutely. But I'll guarantee you, Brad, I'll kick his coverage on that deal. <laughs> Here's a three-pointer up and no good. Brookham an offensive rebound. Bach from behind. I think Weber just picked up his fourth. Yep. Ben Weber picked up his fourth. And I had to chuckle when you were over talking to some coaches. Yep. Weber got his third foul, and Mike Metter comes over to the scoring table. And he says, foul on one, two, white. Got him alongside the head. <laughs> <laughs> You got to describe them all out here. <laughs> no, no gray area there for no, Buds. No. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Jackson Cook will check in, and Ben Weber leaves with those four fouls. Brookman's first one good, second one good. He has seven. Max Miller checks in now, replacing Brookman at the five-minute mark. Then Platt get us back within 12. Three minutes gone here in this fourth quarter of play. Cook leaves it there for Macklin Weber, and now for Kaiser. Here's Cook, circles to the free throw line, high elevation on the shot, good. Jackson Cook with five. 55-41. Tanner Dyke backs off on the dribble, now for Jai Bailey. Dumps it down for Dyke, spin move to his left, nice move, just couldn't finish. Cook with strong defense, and Dyke just couldn't put it down. Stottero pass into the lane for Cook, and it's kicked by Sprick. So here's Wolman, nearing the halfway point of this fourth quarter, and Bridgewater Emory looking like they're gonna move to 10 and seven. They only have three games remaining after today. Platt Geddes is in a really tough run right now as they dump pass down low and as Cameron Stottero is up and good. Today and four more games in nine days. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, they've got five games in nine days, including today. And they're gonna have to try to find some way to get because the ship righted here. Postponements or just? Uh, just one postponement is all wow, against Gregory. That's a busy schedule at the end of the year. Yes, no doubt. Man. Out front, Weber with it. Macklin Weber dumps it down low and it's out of bounds. Yeah, because Tuesday they're hosting Winter. Thursday they host Gregory. Friday they're at Wagner. And then on the 19th, Todd County, along with today. So yeah, five mm. games in nine days. And now the Black Panthers will lose it out of bounds at the end line. Yeah, you want to be playing games, but not five in nine days. That's pretty tough even on young legs. Yeah, for sure. And sometimes this time of the year, you want to heal up some, some boo-boos that you might have, but that's not going to allow for that. Boy, ain't that the truth. Ben Weber in the corner, out for Cook. Cook. May have got away with a push off with the forearm and he's gonna knock down the free throw line jumper. He has seven points. 59-41. Jai Bailey, that's for Dyke. Leaves it for Sprick. Crossover dribble into the lane, leaves it out front for Jai Bailey for three. Back of the rim, no good. Rebound to Ben Weber. He wants to run and he'll be fouled as he comes across the half-court stripe and followed by Hayden Sprick. I did not notice that Ben Weber had tape on his right hand earlier. Did he just get that done? I think so. Must have uh, cut it or something. Yeah, I guess I didn't notice either. No, I, I know he didn't earlier. No. All right, time out on the floor. Two minutes, 33 seconds remaining. It is all Bridgewater Emory, 59-41 over Platt Gennis, and we'll be back in a minute on Live Ticket TV. Stay at home by offering caregiving, nursing, and medical alert systems in over 55 communities in South Dakota. Specializing in tasks like bathing, meal prep, and medication setups, our well-trained staff delivers exceptional care. We invest in our team through customized training and comprehensive benefits. To learn more about job opportunities or services, visit our website at corecares.com. 
Core Cares, proudly serving our community. Game over. <laughs> oh, I was giving a bad time to my friend Mike Mutter right in front of us here on his <laughs> description. <laughs> they should they should do that every time. Describe every foul. Oh yeah. yeah just about tore his arm off. <laughs> Entry pass deflected by Parker Bailey and Clyde Geddes brings the front towards. Oh, what a Ooh. spin move in the lane. Good. Hayden Sprick with a highlight reel. That was sweet. Woof da. And he averages 13 points a game. That's his first points of the day. Oh, boy. But he made it worth it. That was a Sports Center top 10 right there. Well, we found out that Ben Weber's got a little cut on his hand. That's why he's got it taped up now. Yep. Here's a jumper. Kaiser can't, or should say Woolman, can't get it to go. But the long rebound tipped out. Everything going the Huskies' way here with under two minutes remaining. And you're right, Tim. It was very observant on your part to see that tape. <laughs> Excellent job. You might have a future in this business. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I notice all the unimportant things. <laughs> here's Weber. Jumper good and the foul. Down the basket. Foul is on Parker Bailey. He will walk down to his coach and say, I'm going to tell you something I don't want to tell the official. He's not real happy with that call. <laughs> Holden Wolman gets his point number 17, and now point number 18 as he caps the conventional three-point play. So Bridgewater Emery, six and two in their last eight games, and now Sprint with a three-pointer from the left side. And about 26 feet out. Yeah. He's going to, game just about over. I got to get some points up here. <laughs> Weber against Dyke down to a minute 20, and there's a steal. Parker Bailey's gonna try to go coast to coast. No, it's he had to change his shot because two defenders were coming, missed it, got his rebound back, gives it to his teammate Jai Bailey, who scores, and will go to the free throw line for one. Now Parker's mad at himself. By golly, that was a heck of a play. Missing that shot and then still getting after it and made a really nice quick pass in there, too. Yep. Free throw good. Jai Bailey with nine. And here comes Weber with the front court, has to circle, and brings it back out front once again. Got help from his coaches saying his defender's coming. And under a minute remaining. Here's Stottero, he has his pocket pick. Sprick will bring it front court. Jai Bailey now for Dyke. Dyke is going to be fouled. Yeah, a little bump out there at the free throw line. Kaiser. Believe we'll get it. Yep. His second foul. And the Huskies lead by 13. Scott Schultz going to call a timeout. And you think, well, why? Well, because Platt Geddes has made this scoreboard a lot closer than what the game has been. Yeah. And probably just need a little little breather here. Yeah. Talk about finishing the uh, the game out. Yep. Don't need to be in a hurry on offense. And sometime when you're on the floor, you don't. You don't realize that, but I'm sure he'd like him to just take your time, work some clock. And game number four has uh, come down to this. Thank you to all the great sponsors that make it all possible, including our title sponsor, Jason Bradley and the good folks at Culver's, an annual event, the 15th year, and also to Bank West with their contributions as well, along with many other corporate and associate sponsors that make this all possible. Here for this game, TS Insulating of uh, Platt, Kites Lounge in Platt, Total Stop Convenience Stores, Meyer Motor of Bridgewater, Creotel Communications, the Security State Bank of Emory and Canastota, JL Aaron Insurance Agency, Sandy's Bar in Emory, Rivers Edge Bank in Bridgewater, Howard, Marion Parker in Hayward in Iowa, Hofer Physical Therapy, Feathers at the Ranch and Barcher Fencing and Concrete. All of those folks helping to make this possible on Live Ticket TV. Yeah, speaking of people to thank, our camera guys up in the uh, in the booth doing yeah. a great job. All here all day with us to uh, 
to help bring you these games. Appreciate it. As was the case yesterday, too. Dyke missed the first one, makes the second one. And ball knocked it about. Glad Geddes not quitting by any stretch of the imagination. Frank Cutler won't let him. No, no. Speaking of that, told you how much money Sabres takes off me on the golf course. Not even close to what Cutler does. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, he's, he's, he's a like, ringer, isn't he? He's like the star of the senior tour. Dyke right with a steal, but then has it blocked from behind. Right block shot. Yep, indeed. And the shot clock has about a four second differential. And the Huskies leading by a dozen. And Weber fouled in front of us here, Dyke. Yeah, Cutler can uh, Cutler can stroke it, Gannon. Well, yeah, it's a whole family deal. He brings Sherm down from Claremont, oh, and boy. Uh, yeah, they're all involved. You don't want to match up against them, I'll tell you. <laughs> Keep your hand on your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Platt Geddes going to bring in some reserves. We'll try to get all of them. Skyler Hanton is back in. Thirty-four is Ty Rowland. Twenty-two, Maddox Van Z. Ten. Aiden Betcher and, and 14. 40, 42 Riker Noctegall. And yep, Huskies to make a change as well. 14 Ryan Wolman. Yep. 22 Keen Stevenson. Jason Zeeb, number 33. Yep. And a couple of other guys have been in. Here's Cook, elevates with the jumper, hangs on the rim. Yeah. And gets the nice dance to fall in for Cook. He has nine points. And that's your ball game. The Bridgewater Emory Huskies with an impressive late second quarter and all of the second half. Win it by 14. Your score, Bridgewater Emory 64. And Platt Geddes 50. With the win, Bridgewater Emory improves to 10 and 7. Winners of six of their last eight games. Meanwhile, for Platt Geddes, they will drop to nine and seven on the season. And Bridgewater Emory led by as many as 17 points and they'll win it by a 14 point margin. And your MVP, no question, Ben Weber with 12 points officially. We'll take a look, or unofficially, we'll take a look at official numbers for points and rebounds as well. But I think he had nine rebounds at halftime. Yeah, so, yeah. he yes. played really well. Yep, big numbers for Ben. So scoring goes like this. Well, first of all, the uh, the summary, 9-9 nine, nine after one. And Bridgewater Emory went on a 9-0 run to end the first half of play, leading 25-23. And there was a stretch between late second quarter and end of the third quarter where Bridgewater Emory was on a 22-2 run. And they lead it by 17 after three, 51-34. And 64-50 is your final score. I have Holden Wallman leading the way, 18 points unofficially, like we mentioned. Ben Weber with 12. And then for the starters, Macklin Weber with 9, Jace Kaiser with 9, and 8 for Cameron Stottero. So great, great balance. All starters between 8 and 18 points. And then off the bench, Jackson Cook, one of his first action back after an injury in football. He ends up with 9 off the bench for Coach Scott Schultz. Meanwhile, for Platt Geddes, they will be led in scoring on officially 18 for Tanner Dyke. Next in line for the starters, Braxton Brookeman with seven. Five for Hayden Sprick here in the fourth quarter. Four for Skyler Hanton. Four for Parker Bailey. And then bench points, Jai Bailey with nine. And Max Miller with three is the scoring for the Black Panthers of Platt Geddes. Like we mentioned, Platt Geddes Tough stretch right now. This is the first of five games in nine days for them. They will host a winner on Tuesday, Gregory on Thursday, travel to Wagner on Friday, and then they host Todd County on the 19th, which will be a week from Tuesday. Meanwhile, for Bridgewater Emory, they have to go to Irene Wakanda on Tuesday night. Friday night host Mitchell Christian and then on the 23rd, they have quite a time off before the 23rd of February. They're at Del Rapids St. Mary's to wrap up the regular season before regions start for all the teams across South Dakota. Got final team stats in here. We're wondering about Ben Weber for sure. Uh, yeah, nice double-double, 12 points and 12 rebounds for Mr. Weber here. He also had 
three assists in the ball game and a block shot. So uh, no doubt why he was named the MVP. Uh, let's take a look at some team stats for you. I mean, Bridgewater Emery really shot the ball well here. 52% for wow. the uh, the game. They like to bottle that up and bring it every night, I can tell you. 27 out of 52 shots for Bridgewater Emery. They also made six out of 17 threes for 35%. On the other side for Platt Geddes, they were only able to shoot 37% for the game, 18 out of 49. So that's nine more field goals by uh, Bridgewater Emery. Five of 16 from the uh, three-point line for Platt Geddes. The uh, Black Panthers did have a little bit of an advantage at the free throw line. They made nine of 17 compared to just four of seven for Bridgewater Emery. Rebounding, pretty even, 32 to 28. Bridgewater Emery had a little bit of an edge there. Again, a dozen of them for Mr. Ben Weber. Uh, pretty well spread out on the other side for Platt Geddes, but six apiece for Parker Bailey and for Braxton Bruckelman in the ball game. Nine turnovers is all for Bridgewater Emery. Talk to any coach and they say, if you can keep it in single numbers, uh, they'll take that in the turnover department. So they had nine, 11 turnovers for Platt Geddes in the ball game. And the other thing for Bridgewater Emery, moved the ball well. They had 17 assists out of their 27 baskets. Uh, six of those six belong to uh, Jace Kaiser here tonight. Yep, 17 on 27 is a very good number. The 17 to nine assist to turnover ratio also a very good yeah. number as well. And yeah. so, yeah, Scott Schultz has to like the way his team played in this one. And they win it by the 14 point margin, 64 to 50. Well, earlier today, McCook Central Montrose defeated Korska Stickney 54 to 48. Game number two, Freeman defeated Lower Brule in a good one, 55 51. Phillip over Centerville in a good matchup, 49 44. And here in this one, Bridgewater Emery defeats Platt Geddes by the score of 64 to 50. A lot more action coming your way. Tim Smith is standing by with the call of the Cavaliers of St. Thomas More and the Titans of Mount Vernon Plankington warming up down here on the floor. After that, we'll have Gregory against Del Rapids St. Mary's, who's honorable mention in Class B. At six o'clock, Howard, honorable mention, receiving votes in Class B against Parkston. 7.30 tonight, receiving votes in Class B, Canastota against number one in Class B, White River. And then the marquee matchup, the finale tonight about nine o'clock, number four in Class B, Viberg Hurley against number two in Class A, Hamlin. And that will put a lid on things for the 15th annual Dakota Wesley and Culver's Basketball Classic, also presented by Bank West. So still a lot of action yet to go during the halfway mark of this day, but. Boy, a lot of great hoops coming up here for the rest of today and into this evening. No question. All right. Well, let's take a little break here, hear from some of our uh, great sponsors on the live ticket, and then we will come back and set this one up for you. Nice Class A battle. Uh, St. Thomas Moore and Mount Vernon Plankin. And coming up next, we will return after these messages on Live Ticket TV. <laughs> 